the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed? What's the difference? The Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed are both the profession of faith which all Catholics use. The purpose of this creed is to remind and provide knowledge to the faithful about their correct belief and orthodoxy. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Apostles' Creed is so called because it is rightly considered to be a faithful summary of the Apostles' faith. It is the ancient baptismal symbol of the Church of Rome. Its great authority arises from this fact. It is the creed of the Roman Church, the See of Peter, the first of the Apostles, to which he brought the common faith. The creed is divided into twelve parts, the main beliefs of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Now we believe that the Virgin Mary will be made a virgin even after giving birth to Jesus Christ. And the Catholic faith teaches that Jesus alone is the only Son of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Now this is the belief we have as in opposition with what the heretics have been saying that Jesus Christ did not suffer because he was a god. He descended into the dead and the third day he rose again. This is the first meaning given in the apostolic preaching to Christ's descent into hell. That Jesus, like all men, experienced death and in his soul joined the others in the realm of the dead. But he descended there as a savior, proclaiming the good news to the spirits imprisoned there. Translated the Hebrew and Greek words for Sheol, Hades, and Hell. Because our faith indeed tells us that Jesus Christ our Lord resurrected after three days. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Catholic means universal, which was intended by the Lord himself that the faith of the Christians should be universal because he wanted all of us to have that salvation. The communion of the saints simply means that those who have died before us and who have been in glorified body can still intercede for us, can still communicate with us because we are one church, one body. Our church is divided into three, the church triumphant, church suffering, and the church militant. The church militant are composed of people who are still on earth struggling to be holy. The church suffering are the poor souls in purgatory who are still suffering because of the remnants of their sins while still on earth. And they are experiencing expiation in purgatory and the church triumphant. The Church Triumphant are composed of the saints who have died and have been already enjoying the presence of the Holy Trinity. That is why we have our patron saints here on earth, because we do believe that we're all one in this church and we're communicating with each other together with the Holy Trinity, with the perfected souls, the soon-to-be-perfect souls, and the struggling souls. Okay, moving on. When do we use the Apostles' Creed? The Apostles' Creed are normally used in our personal prayers like the Rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and many others. The Nicene Creed is the third version of the Apostles' Creed. It is often used in the Sunday Masses, explains the teachings of the Church, and affirms historical realities of Jesus' life. The Creed does not directly quote scriptures, but it is based on biblical truths. The Council of Nicaea was the first general council of the Church since the Apostolic Council of Jerusalem. 
set conditions for Gentiles to join the church. Roman persecutions of Christians had just ended 12 years earlier, and now the church was divided over the questions of Jesus' divinity. Heretics led by a priest named Arius in Alexandria, Egypt, claimed that if Jesus was begotten by God, he must have had a beginning like every other part of God's creation. Therefore, Jesus was not fully God. The theological dispute threatened the peace of the Roman Empire, so Emperor Constantine, at the request of several concerned bishops, called for a meeting of all the church bishops in the easily accessible town of Nicaea, present-day Iznik, Turkey, organized like the Roman Senate with himself as an unvoting observer. An estimated 318 bishops came. Among them were Pope St. Sylvester, St. Nicholas of Myra, St. Eusebius of Caesarea, considered the church's first historian, St. Athanasius, and St. Alexander of Alexandria. Many of the bishops had marks of the persecution on their faces. They had faced the threat of death for their faith, and they are sensitive about the details of the doctrine. The council's main purpose was to quash the Arian heresy and settle the doctrine of the Trinity, that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit were three divine persons in complete union. The term Trinity was not new, of course. Besides Jesus, reference to it in scriptures. Many church fathers have written about it in the first century onwards. On May 20, 325 AD, the council opened. It is likely they had a draft from Bishop Hosios of Cordova to consider as several creeds were already in use by Christians to identify themselves and as a means of inclusion and recognition, especially at baptism. In Rome, for example, the Apostles' Creed was popular. After being in session for an entire month, the Council promulgated on June 19 the original Nicene Creed, written in Greek. All but two of the bishops, who were Arian sympathizers, approved the text. Those two bishops, as well as Arius, were excommunicated for their heresies and were exiled. There are still other amazing trivias that are contained in the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed left and said regarding this beautiful creed. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. See you again.